Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we've had Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. This is in our fourth year. Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag record if you're joining us recording. Hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. It is a nice day here in the Mid-South. A little bit overcast right now if you want the Pray First weather. Uh, but I do see some blue skies breaking through behind there. I think there's chances of rain today, but that's okay. We could use a little bit. I was cutting my grass the other day behind me and it looked like the dust bowl, man. I, I needed one of my, you remember the COVID mask? I needed, I needed one of those and I needed a, a, a turban. It was like riding a John Deere through a Sahara desert dust storm. It was, it was really bad. What's up, Gail? Good morning. Good morning, Tasha. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Leanne Godsey. Good morning. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those, and let all our first-time guests know that we are so glad they are here. Good morning, Anita Henson. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you guys. We are going to get to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to share a few things before we get there. We're actually going to be beginning at verse 29 on the Bible Project. Remember, Pray First is a conversation we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., of course, but Pray First is so much more than that. Pray First is a principle. What is the principle, guys? If you've been here at Pray First for any length of time, you should know that Pray First is giving God the first of your day, the first of your week, the first of the month, the first of your year, the first of your treasures, your talents, the first of your everything. God deserves and demands that he be first. So before we roll out of bed and turn on the news, especially, <laughs> especially the news, uh, before we check our messages, before we check our email, before we go to social media, before we do all those things, before we talk to our spouse, you know, talk to the dog, before we get out of bed, I, it's gotten to the point where before I kind of get fully conscious and aware before my eyes even open, I'm saying, good morning, Lord. Did you know that you can do something as simple as saying, good morning, Lord? I, I know it's, it's, it's crazy. That's putting God first, and it sets the agenda of your day. I've seen so many people, 5, 30, 6 in the morning, saying, oh, this is a terrible day. And I'm like, what in the world have you done at 5, 30, or 6 in the morning that has already assigned the agenda of your day as terrible? Right? I mean, you just wake up and it's terrible. So if you wake up and it's terrible, I want to tell you something else. Give God the last of your day. Don't take away the first. Give him your first. But before you go to bed at night, wrap that day up. Seal that day up. Tie a ribbon on top of today and say, tomorrow is going to be, tomorrow is going to be a good day. Okay? Lord, I'd release the stuff that happened today. I'm going to forget it. I'm going to move forward tomorrow. And just kind of wrap that day up in prayer and ask God to give you rest Ask God to give you dreams. Ask God, Jim Meyer said you'd be surprised what he can do at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. Dude, you're just an overachiever. I'm talking about normal folk, not superheroes. Yeah, quit getting, quit getting confused with the rest of us down here. Uh, so just, you know, just keep that in mind. Put God first. Have some sort of conversation with him throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, just kind of wrap it up. It's not one of those... And look, I know some of you are guilty of this because I am, and you know if I'm guilty of it, you probably are too. Maybe not. Some of y'all are like like chip overachievers, but have you ever laid down at night to pray and or in the morning? Anytime you pray, have you ever been distracted? Like you'll start talking to God and then you'll just kind of, ah, there, ah, I wonder if my lawnmower broke. Ah, I wonder if, ah, I wonder if I packed my lawn. Ah, where's my keys? Did I, get my, did I put my phone on the charger? Or, or, you know, the now I lay me down to sleep prayers where you, uh, <laughs> where you fall asleep before you. Here's something about amen. I gotta say this, and then I, then I need to move on, move on. But I just, I get to be with you this morning, so I get to do what I want to do on on pray first, and and what I want to do is just say, man, I'm life is life is pretty pretty fascinating pretty good pretty crazy pretty up pretty down have a conversation with God that is ongoing not just you know in your prayer life ongoing conversation 
I think the word amen has destroyed prayer, just to be honest with you. Um, I say it, it's probably a formality. It, and I, I probably say it too because I'm a public speaker, so when I say amen, they know all the people who've now closed their eyes and, and bowed their head for whatever reason. Why, why do we do that? Where, where in here? Where, where in here does it tell us to bow our head and close our eyes? I don't know. But then comes that word amen. And amen is like, like you're on the phone. Well, I'm looking for my phone and I'm talking to my phone. Like you grab your, you know, what's up? What's up, Corrine? How you doing today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been pretty nice here as well. A little bit hot, a little bit dusty, Corrine. Amen. Like, like, amen, kind of like, and cut. Like, like you're done talking to God. Amen. <laughs> Where did we get that? What is that? Like, it's like, bye-bye. Amen is like, bye-bye to God. Like you're four years old. Bye-bye. And I know what the definition of amen is. I know. Amen means, means so be it. Let it be done. You know, so be it. My question is kind of, are we saying amen, let your will be done, God, or amen, let all my requests be done? Bye-bye. And then we kind of walk away and the formalization of prayer making it formal I think has destroyed an ongoing conversation with God I know I'm taking away all of our treasure box trinkets of Christianity but to tell Christianity goodbye and to become a disciple, you're going to have to change something. And one of those is your prayer habits, talking to God, just always talking, always listening. Scripture indicates to us that we are to pray always without ceasing in all kinds of prayer. Not just the, amen, bye-bye, guy, bye-bye. And then you walk on and live your life. I think the bye-bye word, amen, has caused a lot of people to make a lot of bad decisions and go a lot of wrong directions because their prayer time was over and now it was time for them to live their life. An ongoing conversation allows God to talk to you. I mean, he just talks to you anytime. You'd be walking down, oh, the God, there's a flower. T -t God says something. I walk past a bird and the bird is saying, oh, God's saying something. Me, when I go down to the Hunan, hashtag Hunan. Come on, everybody, hashtag some Hunan. You know you like the Chinese buffet, man. When I go down to the Hunan, I don't even like these things that I'm about to tell you about. Because I don't, I don't believe in, well, I believe in superstition. I know superstition exists, but I don't believe in the power of superstition. I believe in the power of the demonic that is probably empowering superstition and, and many other things. But, you know, that's a whole other subject for a whole other day. Um, I grabbed them fortune cookies, man. That is... That is pure lard, sand, and sugar. I think that the three ingredients of fortune cookie are lard, sand, and sugar. And maybe not in that order. It's probably two cups sand, cup of lard, and a half a cup of sugar. But I break them cookies open and I say, Lord, give me, give me a word from you. And I pull that little sheet of paper out and inevitably read the back. Don't you hate it when you read the back of that sheet of paper like it's your fortune for the day or your, your whatever. And remember, I don't do the I don't do the fortune cookie thing. But as I'm asking God, I flip it around and it says something and I'm like, "You know what? That's pretty powerful." And then other times it says something like the sun reflects off the moon. You know, I can make anything spiritual. 
I have missed y'all, Lana. I want to talk to y'all. I look. I'm gonna record the Bible. I've got that right here. I've promised my boys. I promised all y'all. I promised God. I'm reading the whole Bible. I'm gonna record that. But man, the Ark in Rome wasn't built in a day, and, and fortune cookies wasn't baked overnight. You just gotta. Right now, I just want to talk to y'all. It's kind of like you know what? I'm gonna make something spiritual out of this. I think God misses us. Oh no, I'm about to, that. Thank you, Lana, for posting that. I have missed y'all. I've been reading the word to you guys, and, and so have my other pastors and friends. But this ain't the only place God talks to us. No sorry, Bob. This is one place that God talks to us. This is one way God talks to us. This is the logos you want to get into the Greek New Testament word, this is the written word of God. But there is another way he talks to us, the way he communicates with us, and that is through the rhema. And that's the Greek word, New Testament word for God is speaking to you verbally. God speaking to you. And it's, it's as powerful, it's as relevant this, this goes without saying, but for you theologians out there, it doesn't contradict this. He's not going to tell you uh, to go in opposition of what his written word says. It's, but just because something is not in contradiction does not mean it's not fresh, new, powerful, revelatory. It might be something brand new that you didn't get right here. The principle might be found here, but the fresh word specific direction, clarity, relationship. God didn't just write you a letter and decide, amen, bye-bye. <laughs> look, look, quit treating the Bible, the written word of God, like God said, amen. Or like God said, bye-bye. Like the God of the universe, everything he's got to say is not captured in a book. Jesus crystal clearly said, crystal clearly, I have many more things to say to you. Speaking to his disciples who were standing there, the, the men and women who beheld his glory, looked at him, touched him, ate beside him, slept around him, followed him around the seas. I have many more things to say to you that you can't handle right now. He said, however, when the Holy Spirit comes, the same God breath, the same Ruah, the same Numa that goes, <sighs> comes. He's going to remind you what I said. He's going to guide you into all truth, meaning there is deeper truths. There are fresh revelations. There are specific directions, instructions, encouragement, empowerment for you today, right now, that you don't have to go quote a memory verse for, you can listen to the voice of God because my sheep hear me, they know me, they follow me. Specific revelation, the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus says, I got many more things to share with you. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. He's going to remind you what I said and he's gonna tell you of things to come. This does not negate the power of this word in any way. It magnifies it. Because some of you wonder, how do I know when I know when God's speaking? How can I tell if it's God? How can I tell if it's me? How can I tell if it's my imagination? How can I know that God's speaking to me? You can know that God's speaking with you anytime he says something that may not be in here specifically, but is backed up by his character eternally. You know how you can take scriptures out of context. It's the same thing in a conversation or in a relationship. I can't tell you how many times as a leader, as a pastor, as a husband, a father, someone will take one phrase. Someone will take one sentence and one message from one series. And they'll base everything they believe about me on that one statement that they plucked out of a paragraph 
that they plucked out of a 45 minute sermon, that they plucked out of a six part series and decide how they feel about me based on that sentence rather than my entire life's work that clearly negates their theory based on one sentence. That's how we do God. That's how we treat his truth. That's how we treat his word a lot of times. We'll pluck one sentence out of one paragraph, use it out of context, and decide who God is. We've done that positively and negatively. God can't be good. Look at the Old Testament. Look what God said to Moses. Look what God did to the children of uh, the Amalekites. Look what happened here, and we'll pluck that one thing out. And his characteristic is found all throughout here, and we'll pluck that out. Here's another way we do it in a positive manner. He said, if you ask anything in my name, he'll do it. As if A13. God, I want A13. God, just give it to me. A13. You said, oh, hallelujah. You said, hallelujah. That if I ask, you'll do it. Psst. Are you are you are you are you brain dead or Christian? I mean, you're one of the two. He doesn't always do what we ask, but we pluck a scripture, we post it on the refrigerator, we define the character of an eternal universal God. Not by his entire body of work or not according to his goodness and not according to his sovereignty, but according to our will. And then we say, amen, let it be like I've just asked, or amen, let it be like I just said, or bye-bye, bye-bye. I don't know where all that came from. I came here to read 1 Corinthians, I promise, I did. Chapter 15, verse 29, and wrap the book of 1 Corinthians up. But like Lana said, I miss you. And uh, obviously, Pray First is, is changing. Pray First is morphing. Not the principle, but the 7 a.m. broadcast. God's got something more to do with us in uh, our online family. And I'm not exactly certain what it is yet, but I have missed you. And I've got more to say, and I've got more to share, and I've got more to... Uh, experience with all of you uh, than simply just recording the Bible. Now, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to record the Bible, and I want you to come along with me as I do it. Or as we do it, I should say. But, uh, new format. Be talking about it soon. I just want to encourage you today, don't tell God, bye-bye! <laughs> Next time you say amen, I want you to giggle. Lord, la 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 Amen. Bye-bye. No, God's still talking. Can you imagine calling someone and just talking for like five minutes and saying bye-bye? You didn't even listen to what they had to say. Amen's like, I'm not listening to you. Bye-bye. Stop it. He wants to talk to you all day long. He loves you so much. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody who's stuck through all of that rambling and everybody who's watching. Lord, I pray that you give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us, God. Give us ears to hear what your spirit. Father, that we would apply the Tongue Tied series here, that we would be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Love you guys. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Just kidding. <laughs> you guys have a great day. Hi, Julia. Hi, Stacy. And listen, I've been saying amen since I was, I don't know. That may have been one of my first words. So I guarantee you that I'm going to pray and I'm going to say amen. <laughs> but, uh... I'm not going to say bye-bye, not to God, but I am going to say bye-bye to you. Bye-bye, pray first.
I'll see you later. Have a great day.